Hey, brothers and sisters. Chalam. Chalam, chalam. Back again. All right. We're going to continue with understanding the end times. In the prior video, we got an overview. We know the three signs. And now we're going to get more into the scriptures and get understanding and eventually get to the point and seeing a lot of details of what is going to be transpiring. This is a very detail-oriented series of lessons to understand the time frames we're in and what's going to be coming. Let's start at uh, Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 please. Um, you want you want to go straight to 27? Whoa, I do not. I would like to start at Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. I'm so ready to get to verse 27 that <laughs> I spoke too soon. Uh, um, Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. 70 weeks and determine upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression mm -hmm. and to make an end of sin right and to make reconciliation for the iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and yeah. to anoint the most holy know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build jerusalem unto the messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. That actually happened with Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 17 and chapter 6 verse 15. Nehemiah was sent and the wall got built. So there was seven weeks and three score and two weeks. From that time that that stuff transpired, it led to Yache coming. Can we read the next verse, please? And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Notice. The wording is very particular. It didn't say on the three score and second week. It said after. Now this part of the prophecy is going into a time frame. And we're going to see it leads all the way up to the end times. Can you continue reading, please? But not for himself. We know that's when Yache died for the unholy. That's when he was sacrificed and when he was on the earth. Okay? And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and sanctuary. That was when Titus and Vespasian came in 70 AD. And that was more than seven years from the time that Yahweh had made the sacrifice. That's what lets you know when it says after the three score and two weeks from that time is going into a long time frame unto the end. Just from what it's saying, Messiah shall be cut off and not from self. Yahweh made the sacrifice. We know that from Matthew chapter 27. That's the gospel. And then he said, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Yache prophesied it would happen in Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24, and chapter 19 as well. And Rome indeed did come and do it. Continue, please. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And the end thereof. That's when you know after that three score and two weeks, all these events were leading up to the end. And it's very key that it said, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. So in the end, there's a flood that's going to come, and we're going to look at that by precept. We can see what it was referring to. Psalms 18 and 4, please. The sorrows of death come past me, and the floods of unholy men made me afraid. So we see the flood that's coming is the unholy coming at us. It even speaks of it in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12 to 15, that the dragon cast out of his mouth a flood, that the woman may be consumed with the flood. Satan will send the floods against us in this last week during the 1274 days, according to the prophecies. Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. That short time is his time to rule of 1331 days. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. So we see how the persecution is really going to pick up when his short time comes. Can you continue reading verse 14, please? And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, and to her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, in the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water at the flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So we see that flood that was mentioned in Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 was speaking of that flood that Satan is going to cast out, that the woman may be swallowed up of the flood. That is evil people that's going to be used in this time to come. Can you read Daniel chapter 12 verse 7? 
so we can confirm that this time frame this time times and a half a time is 1274 days is that time that serpent is going to cast that flood out to purge the house of Israel and destroy the unbelievers of the house of Israel in this time frame Daniel 12 and 7 please and I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time times and a half that's the 1274 days and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people so we see that 1274 days is to scatter the power of the holy people that's why Revelations 13 said that he was given power for 42 months to make war with the saints and to subdue the earth because the, the key is to destroy the holy people and scatter their power in this 1274 days that's coming. All right, continue. All these things shall be finished. But the 1274th day, the power of the holy people will be scattered. Now, those who don't have Yache will be smitten by this flood that the devil's casting out. Daniel 9 and 26, please, the rest of it. And unto the end of the war, desolation are determined. The end of the war that he's referring to is the war that was established in the beginning in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, between the serpent seed and the woman seed. This war has to be brought to its end. And these desolations are referring to the killing of the Israelites, the unbelievers, to purge the church. This warfare between the woman seed and the serpent seed is spiritual firstly, as also being manifested in the flesh. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 tells how we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. This war is within ourselves, as we're also going to see. The war is not just against unholy people. If we read the apocalypse of Moses chapter 28, one can see that. So we thank God for what he's doing because we're getting better understanding to be aware of what this battle really is that's coming at us in these end times so that we don't be mistaken to think we ought to just look out for unholy people right. that's trying to attack us. We have to be mindful of ourselves because we are our first enemy because we're going to read the scriptures to see that the enemy planted the war within us. Apocalypse of Moses chapter 28, please. And Adam answered and said, Grant me, O Ahia, of the tree of life, that I may eat of it, before I be cast out. Then Ahia spake to Adam, Thou shalt not take of it now, for I have commanded the cherubim with the flaming sword that turneth every way to guard it from thee, that thou taste not of it. But thou hast the war which the adversary hath put into thee. We have mentioned Genesis 3 and 15 that this war is between the serpent seed and the woman seed. And Ahaya has been gracious through precept to help us understand where this war is actually taking place. Firstly, it's within us. We have to fight from our hearts. The battle, the playing field is actually our hearts. Can you continue reading in the Apocalypse of Moses, please? Sure. Yet when thou art gone out of paradise, if thou shouldest keep thyself from all evil, as one about to die, when again the resurrection hath come to pass, I will raise thee up, and then there shall be given to thee the tree of life. That's the opportunity for us all. We can also look at Apocalypse of Moses chapter 19 verse 3 to see what was it that the enemy placed in us. Can you read that please? And when he had received the oath from me, he went and poured upon the fruit of the poison of his wickedness, which is lust. So we see the lust of the flesh. That's the war that we're against. The root and beginning of every sin. That's what leads us astray. So be on better God and prepare now to rid our hearts of all lust contrary to Allah. It's our own selves that we're fighting against. This is why Yahweh said what he said in Matthew 16 verse 24 and 25. Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Then said Yahweh unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. That's why we have to strive. The battle is truly within us, against ourselves, brothers and sisters. This is what Yahweh had even told us. Can you read Luke chapter 17, verse 21, please? Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of Elohim is within you. 
We just went over all that information to understand that this attack is not just unholy people attacking us, as Psalms 18 and 4 said. It's an attack within ourselves. We are our enemies. We have to overcome ourselves. Now, going back to after the three score and two weeks, after the Messiah of the Prince shall be cut off, and not for himself, and Rome came and destroyed the city, the people of the Prince that shall come destroyed the city and the sanctuary, Enoch also saw what would befall after the three score and two weeks to help us understand what time frame we are in. Can you read Enoch chapter 93 verse 8 please? And after that, in the sixth week, all who live in it shall be blinded. And you see how everyone was blinded. The world went off into iniquity. And the hearts of all of them shall allahimelessly forsake wisdom. Continue please. And in it a man shall ascend. That lets us know the time frame that Enoch saw was after the three score and two weeks. Because that man that ascended was Yache. In Acts chapter 1 verse 9 it said, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received them out of their sight. So he was seen after the three score and two weeks time frame. Let's continue Enoch 93 and 8 please. And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire. And that's the same thing Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 said. That the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the sanctuary and the city. Rome did do this. Titus and Vespasian did that. All right, can you read the rest of Enoch, please? And the whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. Now that lets you know, again, it was referring to the time frame from the Yache's time all the way up to these times because the whole chosen race would be dispersed. That was a very key verse because all the Hebrews were never dispersed entirely from the land of Israel in their captivities until after the whole race was dispersed after 70 AD. So that shows that Enoch was referring to after the 70 AD time frame because that's when all the Israelites literally finally got taken completely out of the land. The Assyrian captivity, the southern kingdom was still there. Right. The Babylonian captivity, the remnant of the southern kingdom had stayed there. The poor people had stayed in the land. Yep. Then the Persian captivity, the people that were abroad came back to rebuild the temple. And then the Greek captivity, Antiochus and whatnot, we were still there. And of course, Roman captivity, we were still there until 70 AD when we got dispersed abroad. And that dispersion leads all the way up to the modern time from what was spoken in Enoch by precepts in Deuteronomy. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64 and 68, please? Okay, Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the highest shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Now this is key to understand that this curse right here came to pass here in our times from the transatlantic slave trade and the Arab slave trade and so on and so forth. Continue please. And there thou shalt serve other Elohims, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And the highest shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. That lets us know when we get sent off in those ships and scattered around the world and conquered, that would be our last slavery. We would not be sent into slavery again under another nation once we go off in these slave ships. And we know the nation we are under now, we are under Edom. Ahaya, be gracious to give opportunity to go in depth to understand how they came to this time of their dominion. But they are the ones when you review the world history, they profited the most from the slave trade. Even the scriptures tell of how the Philistines and the Tyrians, they sold the children of Judah unto the Grecians. The nations that were in the Middle East at the time, they gave the whole captivity unto Edom. So we know according to the scriptures who Ahia was referring to whose hand we would be in. And that captivity, we will see it no more. Because Esau is the end of the world. As Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9 says, that's why we shall see it no more again. Because after this captivity under Edom's hand, we're not going to be in captivity again. Because he's going to deliver us by that great Savior, that great one, that Isaiah chapter 19 verse 20 said he was sent, which is Yache. Continue, please. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Right. Now, we would be in iniquity serving idols, as Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64 said. 
who would be serving other Alahayams. Enoch saw the same thing would happen in our dispersion according to prophecy. So we can confirm by these two witnesses. We have Ahiah telling it to Moses what's going to come. And Enoch testifying what was shown to him so he could see how we would be gone off. Enoch chapter 93 verse 9 please. And after that in the seventh week shall an apostate generation arise. And many shall be its deeds. And all its deeds shall be apostate. So we read chapter 93 verse 8 of Enoch. The whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. And then he said after then shall an apostate generation arise. That lets us know when we got dispersed we will become an apostate generation. This lets us know the chosen root, the children of Israel went off into iniquity. This is why you can find them still in iniquity around the world. Because this is what the prophecy said we would be doing. So Enoch saw how things would be after the three score and two weeks in Daniel. And he saw how we would be apostate, which means a person who renounces a religious or political belief or principle. That lets us know that though you might find traces of our Hebrew culture amongst us around the world, we are all in iniquity. Because we're not keeping the laws, statutes, commandments, and faith in Allah Hayyam and bearing the fruits in righteousness. So we would be in iniquity unto the times in the last seven years. Hence, Israel is still sinning here within the last seven years around the world. It also shows that our cultures that we grew up in during this dispersion, if it's not actually according to the law, it is iniquity and we have to relearn and do the whole law as Second Chronicles chapter 33 verse 8 spoke of that we have to keep the whole law since it was commanded to the children of Israel to keep it. And please reference the lesson, the law of the spirit of life, to understand how we are to fulfill the whole law in righteousness. Please. Now, seeing that this is the condition we are in, Ahai has been gracious because thankfully there is a remnant that will repent and according to the election of grace, and prophecy shows that it is in these last seven years that the house of Israel will be tried, purged, and cleansed. Daniel was shown what would happen in these last seven years. Can we read Daniel chapter 12 verse 10 please? Sure. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. This is what is going to be happening in this end time frame. Through the purging of the furnace of adversity. Sirach chapter 2 verse 5 talked about how as gold is tried in a fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Now Daniel 9 and 26 where it said the end of the earth shall be with a flood. The Hebrew language it gives more understanding. The word didn't just mean a flood, an overflowing, a deluge. Let's go to the root word of that word. H7857 please. And can you read the Browners Briggs definition please? Sure. To wash rinse overflow and go rinse or wash off so this is a cleansing also notice it's not just an overflowing and consuming this can you continue please yeah to be swept away be rinsed out be scorned or and rinsed right to be scoured and rinsed like you're washing a pot now can you read the strongest definition please a primitive root to gush by implication to inundate cleanse. On this side, on the right hand side now, we discuss what was happening on the left, how the enemy sent his unholy people to destroy the unbelievers. At the same time, because remember the true gospel is coming out at this time too, right? right? At the same time, Yahweh is going to conquer the works of the enemy, destroy all the evil works within his people. He's going to cleanse and purge out his house in this time as well. Can you read Isaiah chapter 10, verse 22 and 23? Isaiah chapter 10, verse 22. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. So you see, you have an overflow of unholy people, destroying everyone that didn't believe on one end. Those same unholy people attacking the righteous, but for the righteous is all a part of the purging. Through the fire of adversity, as Sirach chapter 2 verse 5 said, and through that overflowing of unholy people, the righteousness of Allah is going to overflow. Yahweh is going to overflow in their hearts because the more we're afflicted and we choose right and do right in the midst of the afflictions, 
Yache is magnified in us. He's increasing because the more we overcome is really Yache growing in us. Because it's spiritual warfare. It's not that we're becoming stronger and doing this and da 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 da. Right. It's really Yache growing more and more and he's conquering all the evil spirits. Because what did Ahaya say? Ahaya is a man of war. <laughs> it's Yache that's actually doing it. The scripture says in Psalms that the wrath of man shall praise thee. Showing that man's pride is only going to lead to Ahaya's glory anyway. Satan's attack by sending this flood of unholy people is against the house of Israel. Yes, sadly, he's going to get the unbelievers because that was his portion. But for the believers, those who are called from the beginning, his wrath is only being used to praise Ahaya because it's going to purge the house of Israel that they may truly have Yahshua in their hearts and be sanctified with the Holy Spirit by the furnace of affliction, being purged by that baptism of fire. You can also reference that lesson on the baptism of fire as well to understand it. Continue in Isaiah, please. For Adonai Ahaya and Sabawata shall make a consumption, even determined, in the midst of all the land. And remember Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 says, Unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And also, as it's shown here, that remnant in Isaiah 10 verse 22 and 23, that remnant is going to return and overflow in righteousness. So you can see how in the midst of darkness, light is going to prevail right under their noses. The same way Yache came on the earth in the midst of all that iniquity, Satan doing all his stuff, trying to kill Yache. They didn't even understand what al was really doing and <laughs> Yache was glorified. It's the same thing that's coming to pass here at the end of the world. It's amazing what's actually happening. And the scriptures confirm it's during this close of the last seven years unto the end that the church will be purified. Can you read Hermas, parable 9, chapter 18, verse 3 and 4, please? Sure. And as thou sawest the stones removed from the tower and delivered over to the evil spirits, they too shall be cast out. And there shall be one body of them that are purified, just as the tower, after it had been purified, became made as it were one stone. Thus shall it be with the church of Elohim also, after she hath been purified. Mm -hmm. And the wicked and hypocrites and blasphemers and double-minded and they that commit various kinds of wickedness have been cast out. When these have been cast out, the church of Elohim shall be one body, right. one understanding, one mind, one faith, one love. Because everybody's going to be under the one Adonai Yache. Right. right, continue. And then the son of Elohim shall rejoice and be glad in them. Now listen clearly what's this about to say next. Continue. For that he hath received back his people pure. Notice those were his people that made it. Those were his people that he received back pure. They had been gone into the world and became filthy. But through the furnace of adversity they were purged and cleansed and he received them back. Letting us know that as Romans 9 and 26 said, not all Israel is of Israel. But the people that made it through the 1274 days and are actually good and righteous martyrs when the false prophet comes, those were Yahshua's people. Those are the ones that he received back pure. Continue. Great and glorious, sir, say I, are all these things. And when shall all these things come to pass? Can you read Barnabas chapter 16, verse 16, please? But let us inquire whether there be any temple of Elohim. There is in the place where he himself undertakes to make and finish it. In the place where he himself undertakes to make and finish it is in our hearts. I believe it's Barnabas chapter 6, about verse 14 or 15. He testifies that that's where the temple of Elohim is. Continue. For it is written, and it shall come to pass, when the week is being accomplished. Notice his words, when the week is being accomplished, this is the end of the week. This is when it's going to its end of the world. Continue. The temple of Elohim shall be built gloriously in the name of Ahia. This, the scriptures are continually talking about what's coming to pass once we get into this 1274 days. Now we can see the last week during the 1274 days is a very important time for the purging and cleansing of Israel. The church will finally be cleansed of unbelievers as it's being accomplished unto the end. Daniel 9 and 27 it's something key that was also said in it that we need to see. Can you read Daniel 9 and 27, please? Yes. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. So that's when the 1274-day period starts, in the midst of the week, right? Continue. 
And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. So the children of Israel are going to be made desolate even until the consummation. This is going to be happening up until the end. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And notice who is going to be destroyed? Those that are desolate of faith. The desolation of Israel will continue until the consummation of the world. And Enoch saw in these times wickedness will abound just like Baruch was shown there will be wickedness and unchastity. Enoch also saw that at the close of the last seven years the elect will be selected, the 144,000 men. They will receive the gospel of Allah Hayyam along with their households. So we're going to look at Enoch chapter 93 verse 9 and 10. Enoch chapter 93 verse 9. And after that, in the seventh week, shall an apostate generation arise, and many shall be its deeds, and all its deeds shall be apostate. And at its close shall be elected the elect righteous of the eternal plan of righteousness. Again, it says at its close. This land is only getting near the end, okay? To receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. And he said, at its close shall be elected the elect righteous. So this is when the 144,000 is getting selected. To receive the sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. I'm going to receive full understanding of his righteousness. The elect righteous that shall be elected, they will receive this. And multitudes of Gentiles will believe too, of course. Can you read Romans chapter 11, verse 4 and 5, and verse 7, please? Sure. Romans chapter 11, verse 4. Well, what saith the answer of Elohim unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Enoch saw the election, and John is testifying of the same election, that 144,000. Continue. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. So you see, it's not the whole race by blood that received it. It's the elect that actually received it, right? And the rest were blinded. And sadly, that's what's coming to pass. And Revelations chapter 7, verse 3 and 4, please. Revelation chapter 7, verse 3. Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of Allahim in their foreheads. So it was the servants of our Allahim in their foreheads. And Revelations 9 and 4 show that those servants were men. The sealed 144,000 with their households are the servants of Ahaya Allahim. Pertaining to the house of Israel, he has servants of the Gentiles as well. Can you read verse 4 of Revelation 7, please? Sure. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And there we see, sadly, the rest of the men of Israel and those that their household that stayed under them, they were given over to Satan. Isaiah saw how the children of Israel would be given over to iniquity while it would be a remnant because there would be much iniquity. Can you read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 21, please, and 22? Yeah, this is the ascension of Isaiah, uh -huh. chapter 3, Thank verse you. 21. Thank you. Um, and afterwards, at his approach, his disciples will abandon the teachings of the twelve apostles, and their faith, and their love, and their purity. And there will be much contention at his coming, and at his approach. And there we see, this is the times we are in, Israelites. No matter what religion they are ascribing themselves to, or identity they are ascribing themselves to. There's going to be contention and hatred because they've forsaken the teaching of the twelve apostles. Can you read Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, verse 28 and 29? Sure. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, verse 28. It's going to help confirm and also build upon understanding how and why the children of Israel are being given over. Because the spirit of error and fornication and of vainglory. These are the things that Satan's using to blind the minds from the light of the gospel of Yahweh. And of the love of money. And money as well, continue. Which there will be among those who are said to be the servants of that one. And among those who receive that one. And among the shepherds and the elders, there will be great hatred toward one another. That was the section of Isaiah 3 and 29 showing that's the spirit that's operating. The hatred and contention among them. Because that's how Satan and his evil spirits operate in the firmament. And they're leading their congregations. Or they're leading those who they're teaching or interacting with to receive Satan as well.
It's through the lust and lack of love of the truth that the unbelieving Israelites will be given over to Satan. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse nine to twelve, please. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse nine. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, Elohim shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So we see what led us to not believe the truth, our pleasure in unrighteousness. Please refer to the lesson, all unrighteousness is sin. That gives a good understanding of what righteousness is so that we may not abide in unrighteousness. We have to learn this gospel, learn this doctrine now before this time come because when this flood of unholy people gets sent out it's going to be quite a struggle for people to overcome speaking of the gospel it's also going to be the great sign to divide the elect servants of Allah Hayyam from the servants of Satan as Enoch saw the elect would be elected to receive the gospel and Isaiah saw that the servants of Satan of the children of Israel will seek to be against the two witnesses of Revelations 3 and 6 that shall preach the true gospel by trying to confound the doctrine to lay snares for the sheep of the Jews and the Gentiles. Can you read Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 29 to verse 31 please? Sure. So we see how we begin to see how that true gospel is going to separate the elect from the unrighteous. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 29 And among the shepherds and the elders there would be great hatred toward one another For there would be great jealousy in the last days For everyone would speak whatever pleases him in his own eyes Then we see there would be great jealousy in the last days Everyone would teach according to their desire Not according to the law and testimony in these times Okay, continue And Please. they will make ineffective the prophecy of the prophets who were before me And my visions also Isaiah is telling of these visions that he has even now, and they're trying to make it ineffective with doctrines like the two witnesses are the two tribes of Israel and Judah, the whole tribe, the whole nation of Israel, and the whole nation of the kingdom of Judah. This doctrine is not true. This would make the vision of Isaiah ineffective uh, as an example of how the doctrines of devils are seeking to confound the, the, the righteousness of Allah. Even when you take birth. Yeah. Isaiah goes into that. So. Yes. And the two witnesses after me, will they make ineffective? They will make ineffective. And now, this is amazing because the two witnesses in Revelations 11 and 3 to 6, it says they receive power from Yahche. No man can hurt them. So we know that it's not that the true gospel is not going to go out and the elect are not going to receive it. They're going to make it ineffective for those of the unbelievers. Right. They're going to speak things that make it seem like it's not true. And remember, Ahaya is going to send a spirit of delusion over those who love unrighteousness. So the unbelievers are going to believe the false doctrine that they're preaching and be sadly taken away from the truth of the gospel and be given over to their desires. But the righteous, they're going to believe it. Because it's Yache empowering the two witnesses. So the gospel is still going to go forth. That's exactly true. Because that's exactly what happened in 70 AD according to the book of Josephus. When prophets were prophesying about what was true. Mm -hmm. And even the spirit of Allah came upon that man. He was yes. running around saying, you know. Whoa. Seven years. Right. Seven years. And then the false prophets came. And those that were paid by the Romans mm -hmm. were literally speaking against the prophecy. They yes. keep the people in unbelief. Right. saying that we have to get on top of the building and some stuff like right that. we had, can stay in america like, right it's, it's about the same thing and it killed a lot of people yes it did. that was a good reference right. that was in the america prophecy yeah, Allah yeah, let us read. Read. Read so it, you can right. please reference that lesson so and get an understand of how that's the same thing they did before right. and this is the same thing the enemy's working before people are being paid off people have made deals with the devil and to make a deal with the devil, it doesn't always have to be monetary either. Right. It's a choice in one's heart. Cain made a deal with the devil just by being envious and, and hating his brother. And the scriptures testify the Israelites are going to be hating each other. And jealousy is going to be among them. This is deals with Satan. 
right? In order that they may speak with birth out of their own hearts. They're going to seek to make the gospel that the two witnesses are preaching ineffective. Quick synopsis. When the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation set up, Satan will begin his short time, as Revelations 12 and 12 talked about, of 1331 days, according to Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4 verse 12. During the last 1335 days in this world, as Daniel chapter 12 verse 12 showed that 1335 day. At the same time that those two signs come to pass, the beast will be unleashed out of the bottomless pit, as Revelations 11 and 7 showed that's where he would come from, to receive his authority from Satan who's ruling. And that beast will have authority for 1274 days of the 1331 days of Satan's rule. That 1274 days of the beast time is the last half of these seven years, which is 42 months, according to Revelations 13 and 5. The beast time is from the first day after the two signs, the abomination of desolation and the daily sacrifice being taken away are performed unto the 1274th day of the last 13 135 days of this world at the same time that his time starts on that first day the two witnesses will be given power to preach the everlasting gospel from the first day to the 1260th day within the time of the beast's 1274 days so the preaching of the true gospel is the third sign that we are within the midst of the last seven years and furthermore heading into the last 1335 days left in this world all right chalam brothers and sisters